hello and welcome back. Um, what have I been up to this week? Well, at the beginning of the week, I went to get my hair cut in Wren and my hair, oh, it was a mess before. Oh, I was so embarrassed doing these videos with my hair. I just couldn't do anything with it. So I went to get it cut because the lockdown restrictions have been eased a bit. So that was an interesting experience. So I had to uh, wear a mask. Obviously the hairdresser was wearing a mask and she had like a little visor on as well. I had to hold my mask over my face like this with my two hands so that she could cut the back. So that was really interesting. Uh, well, I didn't film that because the hairdresser didn't want to be filmed. So there you go. You'll just have to imagine it, me like this. She's got a mask on, gloves on. I've got my mask on. Uh, can't really hear what each other's saying, but hair turned out all right. So not too, not too bad. There's a big cathedral next to the hairdressers and I could hear uh, music coming from the church and um, there was an organ playing so I went into the church with my camera and um, I was the only person in there so it was just me the organ player and this beautiful music so um, I filmed some of that and I'll show you a bit of that now On the way back from Wren, I, uh, I had a bit of a uh, incident with the train. So I had my ticket, I went to go to the platform that I thought was the right platform. Actually, it turns out it was the right platform uh, for the train back to Laval, which is the nearest uh, big town to where I live. So I get on the train and I sit in my seat and the train leaves about five minutes early, um, which I thought was unusual because trains in France, uh, they're always well on time very confused, uh, sitting on my train and about 25 minutes into the journey, I'm thinking I should be um, stopping at my stop now. So I get out my phone and uh, go onto Google Maps and look exactly where I am. And I'm uh, way up near the coast in Brittany, uh, about 100 miles from where I should be. So it turns out this train was going from Paris to Brest. So it's the Paris-Brest uh, TGV express service. So I was going way, 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 way in the opposite direction, up near the coast. Um, so I, <laughs> I thought I'm gonna have to just get off in Brest, which is probably about three and a half to four hours drive from the chateau. Luckily, the train stopped about halfway there, which is about 40 minutes into the journey uh, in a place called Lombal. Uh, yeah, I had to buy a ticket um, back. So luckily there was a train back to Rennes uh, 20 minutes later. So I got back on that. Yeah, so then I got picked up by my mum. So then we went to my grandparents, that's my mum's parents, and they live in France as well. They live about an hour's drive from the chateau. So we went to theirs because it was their 61st wedding anniversary. And um, so I filmed a bit of stuff there and uh, I'll show you that now. Farmer. Oh, farmer. <laughs> you look like an old farmer, granddad. <laughs> You've been isolated for two months. <laughs> 61st wedding anniversary. That's it. Congratulations. <laughs> and I'm still wearing the same clothes when I got married. So this is my nan and granddad's house in France. I think they bought this in the early 90s and it was just a ruin. You couldn't live in it. It was just um, completely abandoned. It had mud floors, no water, no electric. And they bought it really cheaply. I think they got it for about 15 or 20,000 pounds or something at the time. So they moved out here in the very early 90s and they've lived out here ever since. They retired early, bought this place, did it up themselves. I just thought I'd show you around their little kitchen. Lovely old range cooker there. She's got quite a large collection of blue and white china. And that's just a fraction of it. 
all of this up here and it just keeps going around and around the room. I think quite a lot of these things I bought her actually. I know I bought her that cake plate. Oh, they're lovely. I didn't buy her those, but they are Spode salt and pepper shakers. This is a Spode lamp and it's the willow pattern, which is based on the old Chinese designs that were popular in the 18th century. Um, but this is an English design based on those. Uh, and I think this lamp was a Christmas present from me and my mum and my family. Actually, my mum said that I went into the shop when I was quite young. Apparently, I put a deposit on it. I think I must have been about 12 or something. Obviously, I was young. I couldn't afford to actually pay for it. So my mum had to end up buying it. But um, as far as I know, they don't make this willow pattern anymore. And it's one of my favourites. So it would be nice if they actually reintroduced this pattern. Huge, huge collection here. Lots of bits and pieces. Some of these are really old. I know a lot of these big platters, they're Victorian. Oh, a lovely old tea caddy. I know that's a ginger jar. That's a tea caddy. Oh, that's a lovely teapot. See, this, these kind of teapots are my favourite shape. These sort of elongated ones. Oh, look, and it's even got its teapot stand. I know she's got some really pretty things in her living room, in a little cabinet. Let's go and have a look and see what she's got in here. So this is her living room. This is where she keeps all the treasure. Let's have a look. Now this, I bought my grandmother for Christmas one year. It's a special edition Spode Willow Plate. Now, what's different about this one? Well, it has Christmas trees and you can see Father Christmas just there and some elves. And they are really, really hard to get hold of now. I tried to find one on eBay um, and just couldn't find one. I think I bought her these. Cruet set, salt and pepper there. Now this is a Spode miniature terrine. See, I've absolutely loved Spode for years. Absolutely loved it. But I never actually bought myself any. I always used to buy it for my grandmother when I was a lot younger as Christmas presents. Look at that little miniature willow plate by Spode. Oh, that's also Spode. Uh, sort of, I don't know what that is, a little mini bowl. Yeah, now this plate is very, very special. I know I've seen other ones. I ma they made a few in this set, uh, and there were slightly different designs. I think they did two or three different versions of this, um, and it was a willow Christmas plate. But this one with the Santa, very difficult to find. I've not been able to find another one, and I've been looking for years. The Spy Blue Room Collection Willow Santa, adapted from an early willow hand engraved copper plate, made in England. Very special. Now, Spode, if you are listening, please bring back the willow pattern. I know you have a slightly different version of it now. It is willow, but it's obviously, it's not blue and white, and it's in a sort of more modern design, but I love the willow pattern. Bring back willow. I do love a Peter Rabbit. See, I think this is where the Peter Rabbit obsession came from. Grandmother. Oh, I remember doing that one. Yeah. So Windsor and Newton ink bottle with a crown on on top of a Windsor and I did that for a, a competition um, for Windsor and Newton, but it didn't win. But Nan's got it now. This is one that I did years ago. Uh, when was this? I must, I must have been about 12 when I did this. It's a willow pattern. There's another one that I did. Was that a Christmas present for you? If, if you When you come up next, can I film yeah. you? Do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> when you come up next, Nan, yeah. will you, when you come up next, will you bring some of my artworks like this one All right, yeah. and this one? Because I'd like to take um, scans of them and make some prints out of them. All right, yeah. Especially that one. That was when I, got I forgot them. I did that. That was when we got married. <laughs> oh, that's where you got married. Let's have a look. <laughs> Minster Abbey. So Minster Abbey is on the Isle of Sheppey in Kent. Also, oh, like, oh, the late 60s or 70s. Looking very Spanish there. Oh, yeah, it would have been about 60. Yeah, yeah. 60s. That beehive is definitely 60s. <laughs> Feel like Amy Winehouse. <laughs> oh, this, my uncle's also an artist. I used to sleep in here when I um, used to come and stay in France, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, here's some artworks that I did. And these are just prints, though. Yeah. A beehive and some honeybees there. It's another one of my artworks. What else? In fact, Nan, I think you probably got the largest collection of my artworks out of anyone. Yeah. 
Even my mum's had a go at doing a bit of art. <laughs> All right, we better get back then. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Bye. So that's my grandparents. Uh, they've obviously they've been in lockdown for uh, two months, so we haven't seen them, but they've been fine. Uh, they've been looking after themselves really well. And um, now it is time for me to go and make a start on the gardener's cottage. Right. Well, there's a lot of stuff to move. There's bikes to find homes for. We've got all of these shutters from the chateau. They need to be rehomed. Um, all of these doors um, and everyone's out at the minute so I'm gonna have to move most of it myself. Well it's typical isn't it all the heaviest stuff is in here but these shutters they're so heavy I can barely carry them but we'll get it done. Uh, only problem is I'm gonna need to get better at filming myself I can't really hold the camera and carry all this heavy stuff so I'm just gonna give you updates so far I've managed to move three pairs of shutters some guttering pipes and a huge cast iron thing, I don't know what it is, um, but I'll give you another update when I've moved a bit more. Right, well, I've just moved all the shutters. They're probably the heaviest bit. Well, I say they're the heaviest bit. There's a huge stack of solid oak doors there. And as you know, oak's very dense. Um, I'm just storing all of these heavy shutters in this little room here. So you've got some here some stacked up here got these lovely little uh, sheds just next to the cottage there's one there so just along this wall here that's where the cottage is so I've just been carrying all of those through from here chose a good day to start doing heavy work it's so hot outside it must be about I don't know 27 degrees Celsius 28 something like that is really really hot it's like midsummer Get there in the end. <laughs> right, I'm just gonna try and move this really heavy oak door. This door was actually from the, I think it was from the basement and it used to be the door to the old elevator shaft. Uh, it's not there anymore. Obviously they removed that because it was so dangerous. I mean, there was literally, it wasn't like a modern elevator. From the first floor, it used to just open up into a shaft which dropped right down into the basement. So that was super dangerous. So it's probably best that it was removed, but, um, we still have the old runners, like the rails for it here. It's so heavy. These things here, these are the, oh, bang my head. These are the old rails that used to go up the side of the elevator and we haven't thrown them out obviously because they're original to the chateau. But how on earth, it's basically a huge lump of steel. How am I gonna lift it? Try and move the other one. <sighs> they are heavy. Right, well at least they're moved out into the little room in the side for now because that's um, that room's not gonna be touched until much later on. Now I've got to try and move this big heavy oak door. If it just about lift it. Well, I couldn't lift it. Um, uh, yeah, I just knocked a bit of the old plaster off the wall, trying to move it, but um, plaster's got to come off the walls anyway, so it doesn't matter. Just came off a bit earlier than expected. <sighs> Tiring work. That's quite interesting. You see that graffiti on that door? Uh, years and years ago, the chateau was owned by um, a Malaysian lady. And she decided that, um, well, she didn't live here. She basically left the chateau abandoned and it was uh, inhabited by squatters. They didn't, like, they didn't destroy things, but what they did is they got spray paint and they just spray painted like the interiors of the chateau. Well, instantly she disappeared. No one ever knew what became of her. And because she wasn't paying her taxes, the chateau was repossessed by um, the state and then sold on to another guy. We don't know what happened to her. We haven't found her here. Unfortunately, we didn't take care of the chateau, so it got vandalised. But the guy who bought it after, he did quite a lot of work to clear up all of this spray paint. I mean, lots of the panelling and the staircase, apparently that was all sprayed with spray paint. He managed to clean all of that off. 
but he didn't manage to finish it. So things like the staircase, we've just put the um, varnish back on. That one's really heavy. Ah, really heavy. That one's definitely oak. Heavy. <laughs> well, that's very interesting. So it did have electric at some point. Uh, I don't think it was electrics for a home. I think it was just some sort of light just to put light in here so people could use it as, um, I don't know, a workshop or storage or something. Some absolutely amazing finds in here. Look, look at this. Let's give that a bit of a wash. See the colour underneath. Wow. Just look at that tile. It's a shame there's not more of them. I wonder where it came from. Do you know what? If that was in one piece, that would have made an amazing trivet to put a hot pan or a kettle or even a teapot on. That definitely won't be thrown away though. That's beautiful. What's gonna be really fun is going round to all the reclamation yards and the antique shops and trying to find old fixtures and fittings for this place because as I said in my previous video, I want it to be really, really old fashioned and to the point where everything in it is old and I'll very sparingly use new things. And anything new I use will be like replicas or, or in the style of a vintage um, decor. So that's gonna be really fun. So you know, things like if I can find some old paneling to go around the walls, uh, at the bottom, then we'll, we'll buy that um, and put that in. Things like, um, even the kitchen, I'm gonna have to have a kitchen made, um, but I know a local carpenter who's actually agreed to do it at a reasonable price. And what we're gonna try and do is use as much reclaimed wood as possible. Uh, so it's not new, um, newly milled stuff, it's all old. So the kitchen will have a bit of an old feel. And if things, you know, bits of wood are a bit beaten up here and there, like it will just add to the, um, to the aesthetic and it will look um, as if it really is old. I want this place to look as if it is like original, everything's original and it's just been really well looked after. That's what I'm going for. So even down to things like the plugs on the light switches, we'll try and find the beautiful vintage like 1920s plugs and light switches so that um, everything is in keeping. Even things like the, the electrical wiring, I'm gonna uh, do the, the old fashioned thing that they did in the 1920s. So instead of putting the wires in the walls and hiding them, they actually put the wires in little metal pipes like conduits, very neatly all around the room with little round metal junction boxes and things like that. So it's all exposed. So it's very of the 1920s. Years ago, people didn't uh, chase wires into the walls and things like that. They actually, they would have had it all exposed and I think it actually looked really nice and really stylish. So we're gonna try and do that. But we're not at that stage yet, so let's get this thing cleared out first. Well, look at that. Started to expose the lovely old terracotta tiles on the floor. Well, these ones are missing. That one can be saved. Oh, look, they just lift out so easily. That one could be saved. No, that one's, that one's knackered. That one can't be saved, nor that one. Look, a lot of these are just crumbling. They can't be saved. Useless. All broken. But every now and again, you have one that comes out whole. So that'll be saved. Unfortunately, a lot of these are beyond repair. That one's still whole. Probably about 50% of these are going to be unusable. You can see they're all cracked, but there is a silver lining. If we go and have a look over here, when my parents cleared out their cottage, which they're doing up at the minute, on the top floor were all these. Look how many there are. There's hundreds of them, hundreds and hundreds. So what we need to work out is, are they the same 
as these ones. I believe they're identical. Yeah, so we can use all of these ones to replace the ones that are broken, thankfully. What I'll do is I'll take one of these. Now, if it fits, we're okay. Uh, yeah, they're basically the same. These ones are a bit nicer, actually. I've still got a lot more to do in here to clear this room out. Let's try and get a good look at this space now. It's quite a decent sized room. So if you can imagine, this is the size of the cooker that I'm going to use. Now, the one I've got is almost the same as this, but it's a cream model and it has slightly different front. Um, and this one was an old gas model, so we won't be using this one. But I've got an old one that runs on coal, a cream one. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen an Arga cooker before. But they have an enamel top and they have these lids that lift up. And they normally have a, hot, like a cast iron hot plate underneath. It's been taken out to make it a bit lighter to move. You have them lit uh, and they are running all the time because they're so well insulated and they've got huge cast iron castings inside that they store up so much heat um, that you only need like a really small fire just to keep it going once it's already hot. So usually it's always hot and ready to go. And they actually give off heat like a radiator um, from the outside. So you have a top oven, which is surprisingly quite a big oven. Uh, it doesn't look very big here, but I can assure you it's probably about the same size as a normal oven, but it's obviously positioned sideways. So it's narrow at the front. So you have a hot oven, which is for roasting, um, and you can also bake in it if it cools down a bit. And then you have a smaller simmering oven, which is probably about 100 degrees um, uh, Celsius. This one's usually about 200 to 220, the top one. And then on the left, above the fire, you have a big lid that you can lift up, and these lids are insulating. You see these lids here? They're packed full of insulation, so the heat doesn't escape from the hot plate so you have a big cast iron hot plate here which is the boiling plate uh, and that's really hot the top of that can be like 300 degrees celsius uh, and then you have a simmering one here so you have a place different places uh, different zones i would say for different cooking temperatures so if you want to boil something you can boil it on here and then you can transfer it to the cooler hot plate which is here uh, to continue simmering it or you can bring things to the boil here and if they're in a, a, a fireproof or you know like an oven dish or frying pan that doesn't have a plastic handle they can then be transferred to the oven to continue cooking and the great thing is these ovens they have little vents in them in the back so all the steam and the cooking smells go up inside under here and they go up the flue and up the chimney so you get no cooking smells in the kitchen and my one obviously is a different model to this. It's an old 1940s one and that runs on coal. So that, I'm going to put that at an angle in this corner. So you can actually see this is quite a large room. So there's room just here to have a little um, wing back chair. Between that window and the door, I have a nice little farmhouse table. Uh, obviously, I showed you the cooker is gonna go in that corner. Uh, and then a piece of a kitchen worktop here with the dresser above with all lovely vintage plates on. And then to the right here, I'll have a kitchen unit that comes just before where the door stops. So the door can still open, you can walk past. Uh, and above that, I'll have, um, there's a little arch window that's in the wall that um, it's been bricked up. So that will be exposed. I'll put that window back. There's also another little arch window just up here as well that's been bricked up. So hopefully I can open that one back up and have another little window here to let more light in. So yeah, this is where the kitchen sink is going to be in this area. Lovely old ceramic butler sink. Um, above, above that, that'll be that little arch window exposed. Maybe a sort of plate rack on the wall to put just plates in that I use day to day. Um, yeah, cooker there. Front door there. Dining area here, like I said, little farmhouse table with a few chairs around it and my little sitting area at the back. So upstairs will be the bedroom and through the upstairs of this little room through here, that'll be the upstairs 
um, en suite. Uh, it'll be very, very small, snug. It'll be just enough room for a shower, a toilet and a sink up there. But um, I think we can squeeze a bathroom in there. And then that means that this little downstairs room, I can keep this as a study. I'll have my uh, upright piano in here, a desk um, where I can have my computer and things like that. Because I want this to be really vintage. Like, I mean, I've talked about it in the last video, but I really, really want this to be so old fashioned um, so that you feel like you step back in time. And the thing is, the reason that behind that is because when I went into Beatrix Potter's house in the Lake District, I mean, it is exactly as it was uh, when she died in 1943 and the National Trust have kept it exactly as it was. Um, but I looked around and said, well, this is great. I could move in today. Um, I, I've got everything I need, like an old range cooker um, that runs on coal, could quite happily have just moved in. So I want this to feel very, very old fashioned, very old fashioned indeed. And I can't wait. Right, well, I've made plenty of progress in here. Just clearing out all of that old clutter was a big job because there's so many heavy things. All of those steel shutters for the chateau. I just need to get this massive Argo cooker out. Um, that's gonna be a big job. That might need two or three people. Um, but I'm gonna come back in here tomorrow and really start clearing this out now. Like I can start taking up the floor, getting those old tiles out. Um, I'll probably get dad to back the trailer up with the um, tractor on it uh, to the front door, get a wheelbarrow and a shovel and literally just start shoveling out rubble into there. Um, and you'll see all of that next week because I'm gonna work on this every day next week. I've had so much to do this week. I've only been able to do one day in here. Just been sorting through the Patreon account. Uh, I had to compile everyone's names and addresses and um, get those all in order so I know who to send prints to and who to send artworks to. And also I've been doing artwork this week, so I'll be able to show you all of that next week. Um, things that the Patreons are going to receive. I can't really fit all of it into to today's video. So what I'll do is I'll put loads in next week's video. I might even do two videos next week just so that we can get everything in. Because so much has been going on here. Literally, I can't, I can't fit all of it into a 25 to 30 minute video. So next week, there'll be loads going on. And I just want to say, if you signed up to my Patreon uh, and became a patron, thank you so much because your donations are helping to fund these videos. They're also going to help to fund this cottage. If you donated through the GoFundMe page to save this cottage, thank you so much because we're almost at the target now. I can't believe it. Literally, uh, it's doubled since last week. Um, just can't believe it. Thank you so much. Uh, what else? There's so much, so much to do. Um, all right, I'm going to have to cut this now. I'm going to have to go edit this video because it is uh, Thursday evening and the video has got to be ready by tomorrow morning. Um, so I'm going to be a long night tonight editing. Um, but just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye.